Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, just wanted to make a video today and shout out to everyone. We hit 400 subscribers, which is a, an amazing feat uh, for me, at least. I'm not a big YouTuber. I'm just a guy with an iPhone that makes the occasional videos and I don't do any editing or anything like that. And still 400 to me is, is kind of cool. 400 people, you know, it's two or three classrooms of people. So that's, that's pretty awesome. So uh, on with it. So, um, what we're going to talk about today is how to get behind the wheel of a older muscle car or older car in general. Uh, there's not a lot of information out there. And one of the things I want to talk about is, is how do you go about financing one? And like I've mentioned in a couple of other, other videos, typically on, typically on a purchase like this, you're probably going to want to pay cash for it if you can. But there is actually a lot of people out there, which I know with COVID-19, they don't want to let go of their cash. And they want to get a, you know, have some fun in a car. And honestly, these cars are some of the best cars that you can actually buy because the depreciation's already run out of them. This car will never be worth less than what I paid for it, unless I put thirty to forty thousand miles on it. And even then, it's probably going to be worth within two thousand dollars of what I paid for it. So I get that question a lot of a lot of the time. I've bought probably running on sixty cars now. And, you know, I think a lot, to a lot of people, I probably look very irresponsible with my purchases, but there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that you have to take into account whenever you buy cars and you're in and out of them like I do. You know, number one, whenever I purchase a car, it, I consider it, you know, I take a look at it and I ask myself financially, is that going to hurt us? And no, it's not. Um, is there the opportunity to make money? With all my car deals, it's either a make money proposition or it's a break-even proposition. Now, I've been burned before, and the two ones that I've been burned on was a Range Rover and a Acura TSX, and both of those I will probably never, ever buy again. The Range Rover, maybe, I really like them, but you know the depreciation is horrible on them. So, back to the financing. So, one of the ways that you can go about financing is you can't go through a traditional bank. So what you have to do is find someone that specializes in it. And the best way to go about it is find an older car that you like, like this Corvette. This Corvette's got 12,000 original miles on it, so it doesn't have many miles on it at all. Um, it's highly desirable. It's a Z06 model, model. And, you know, maybe highly desirable is not the right word to use, but I think you get what I'm getting at. So secondly, have your finances in line. If you have a 600 Beacon, you're probably not going to get a loan on a classic car because it's considered a toy. And this isn't a classic car. We'll call it an older collector car. Car. Sorry, I can't talk this morning. But so get your finances in line. You need to have some equity. So whether that be equity in the house, equity wherever in a savings account, you need to have some equity. And you probably need to have a 700 plus or better, probably better, uh, beacon score to get a loan for something like this because it's kind of considered a high risk value car uh, because it's it's deemed the value of the person that bought it. So one of the things that I do in my household is if I'm purchasing something, there is already money in the bank if I finance it to pay it off. That and we're in a good cash position. So that means that anything we buy, we put 20% down, if not more. Um, and the reason is, is because if another 2008 happens, you want to be able to be liquid. You need to sell it. You lose your job. You need to sell it. You got to put food on the table. You have to be prepared for everything. You know, and I, Dave Ramsey's not a big proponent of financing, and uh, but we do follow a lot of his logic. Secondly, if you have some other type of very, very large outstanding debt, I do not recommend buying something like this. So I just want to come out there and say that. Pay it off and then come back and buy it. Okay. So that's that's really my two biggest things. You want your money to be in stuff that's going to go up in value, not necessarily going to go down. And when you're buying an older car like this, as long as you keep the miles down and as long as you buy it right, you can do that with these vehicles. Uh, so typically, like with this car, I'll own it. I might be in it for some insurance premium, like we talked about last year, 17 bucks a month. But at the end of the day, probably may make some money on this car or break even on it. And, you know, and I'm in a position to wear like that, that's okay. So, you know, that being said, you know, just in short, set yourself up financially uh, to be able to prepare for a purchase like this, like you would anything else. Um, so we're going to walk inside real quick 
And uh, I'm gonna walk you through, there's four different people on the Haggerty site that they recommend for purchasing uh, collector cars from. And I've had experience with three out of the four. Um, and I'm gonna walk you through how I would go about doing it if I were to be financing a older collector car. So that being said, we're gonna walk inside and I'll try to make this video uh, relatively short. Um, but I just want everybody to understand how to do it because these cars are great to buy. Like I said, you know, most of the cars have been very well taken care of. Like that car, it's in great shape and you can have it for half or a third the cost of what you would have bought it for brand new. And at 12,000 miles to me, it's brand new. So if you go on the Haggerty site, you're gonna see four different financing options, okay? And so I'm gonna run you through two that I really didn't care for. Um, and then the one that I don't have a lot of experience with is Premier Financial Services, but I hear good things about them online. Don't really know. Um, and, you know, maybe if I go get a Porsche 911 Turbo, heck, we might just give it a shot and try it out and see how they work. But, so you have JJ's Best Bank and Company. So JJ's Best and Company, the approval is very quick, but the paperwork is just ridiculous. So you have to mail in, I think it's like a W-2, a paycheck stub. You have to mail in all the other additional stuff with the VIN, a copy of the title, and then you put it in an envelope and you overnight it to them. And then they may or may not approve the purchase. Now on top of that, they charge you a financing fee, um, which that was a turn off immediately. I don't do financing fees. It's ridiculous. You're getting an interest rate, you're getting a higher interest rate at that because collect your car. Um, don't expect to get from one of these banks um, a 2% interest rate. It's an older car, it's like financing a four wheeler. You're gonna pay higher interest rate for it, but that's why you, when you buy it, you need to plan to pay it off in a year or two years, which is what I do. So with Best Bank, uh, the, the approval process is really easy, but you have to mail in a ton of stuff, put it in an envelope, and then you have to send it in and you have to wait for them to approve it. So typically if you're going after a highly desirable car, um, this could be a problem because there's probably other buyers, okay? So then Woodside Credit, I, would, I don't recommend these people at all. Um, Typically, it's the same process, except for you would just email it in versus mailing in, in like you would the JJ Spess. And some people have had really great experiences with Woodside Credit, but I remember one time I tried to buy through them just to try them out. What they do, they tried to alter the interest rate on me, and they also tried to alter the payment terms as well. Um, and so they typically will get you locked into a car deal. You, all the money's has been passed across the table. Both of these require a 10% down payment or more. Um, I think Woodside was actually 15. Well, they changed it to a 15 after I already gave them a 10 um, and had intentions of giving them more cash, the additional 10, once we finalize the deal. I know that's confusing. Um, but then they tried to back out and say the interest rate was going to be higher and they were going to change the terms, which I think is crooked as hell. So... And Woodside, I wouldn't do business with them. That's just a personal note. Um, so that being said, the one that was the easiest and is the best way to go about buying it is probably going through Lightstream. Now, Lightstream requires you to have really, really, really excellent credit. I have an 800 plus beacon score. Um, we've got a lot of equity and things, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, without getting into a lot of the other aspects of our financial life. So I got an approval from them literally within an hour. I called them, had an approval in an hour. They wired the money to my bank account that day for $15. Drove to the bank, pulled the money out in cash, $100 bills, handed them to the guy, and we're done. They don't ask for you to do anything else. Once they have run your credit, once they see your history, they know who you are, and you don't have to do anything that this one or this one does. So this one does not charge any of the finance fees besides the interest rate. They don't screw around with raising and lower the, lowering the interest rate. 
And for those of you who do this, I know there's people out there that do this, you don't have to put a down payment on this car. Um, they don't require a down payment. So you plug in the car that you're gonna buy, you put the mileage in, and that's how you, That that's literally about it. They ask for your income, they ask for what you owe on your house, some stuff like that, basic, basic credit application stuff. And you can take out literally a loan for as much as you want, you know, or however irresponsible you would like to be. Um, but for people who have dealt with these two, you know, JJ, I, we didn't finish the deal on the JJ's Best Bank, but like the Woodside Credit, I would absolutely not recommend. I know there's a couple guys uh, that do recommend Premier Financial Services for cars that are like, you know, $100,000, $120,000. Um, which I think that, you know, I'd be interested to try it out, but you know, I'm not buying a hundred thousand, fifty hundred thousand dollar car anytime soon. Um, so I'd be interested to see if anybody else on here has used that, what they have to say about it. Uh, but the other thing is, you know, if you go on Yelp, uh, Woodside Credit's got some really bad reviews and I'm not trying to beat these guys up. Um, but I, d I really don't like it when people try to change things last minute after you've got a deal locked in. Um, it really throws everybody for a loop. It's like, hey, you know, let's be transparent here. Let's get this done. You're going to get your money. But, you know, charging two loan fees, which both these were going to be about $500, and I've got great credit, um, that's ridiculous. Like, for this day and age, it's ridiculous. I mean, you could almost go get a credit line at your bank and just, just do it that way. Um, but Lightstream, this is the one that you want to use. It's easy. It literally took one day to have it done whenever I did it. So I uh, just want to give you guys um, just a little bit of the insight. I know that's a big question. A lot of guys don't have the money to go out and buy a, you know, call it a $30,000 car in cash, um, especially an older one, even though it may be a great, perfectly running car because cars are pretty re reliable these days. Um, but this is a great way to do it um, using Lightstream. You're in, you're out, you're approved, you're not approved. And you're good to go. But guys, I really appreciate the uh, the likes and the subscribing lately. It's been really, really great. Next goal is 1,000 viewers. Uh, but anyways, you all have a great uh, rest of the morning, and uh, I'll see you on the next video.